I am a fine artist and a fashion designer <laughs> and a multitude of other things. Sabrina Ward Harrison is probably my, my biggest influence. She has several books out that are just filled with amazing artwork. I think I'm influenced not just by artists, but really by everything that I come into contact with. So whether it's music or visual arts that I see or performances, that all of that kind of gets stuck in here and influences what I do with my work. I've seen compromise tonight Under the blinding light of your love Yet I feel a bit inspired in spite Of a lost and lonely fight to be I tend to be obsessed with the idea of memories. <laughs> I was really influenced by the film Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and started thinking about how we deal with memory and the significance of memories in our life. I think that memories can actually influence the way that we view our past to the point where we think of it as reality even more than what we know is actually reality. And so I think that memories really shape a person. Preservation versus decay, that's it actually comes from a book called A Staggering Work of Heartbreaking Genius, which is a very influential book in my life as well. It's just a short little blip out of there that just jumped off the pages to me when I read it. What is really more important? What do we want? Do we really want to preserve these ideas or do we want them to decay, which is more beautiful? I started to see that a lot of my work started to get centered around that idea as well. That as the faces um, just began to lose themselves in the fabric that they were losing part of themselves, but there's the preservation of the old, but then there was the decay of the old, and couldn't decide which parts I liked more. And I think it's true of our lives as well. After I am gone, you can breathe a bit easier. All is said and done. You can lower the sides of your gun. I think the reason that I chop off a lot of heads and segment bodies off when I'm photographing is that in a person's face, there's just such an individual story. Often, I think, within images that we get lost within people's faces. We just get so focused in, it becomes all about that individual. I want the photograph to be accessible for any viewer, that they see themselves in it, they can put, almost attach their head, because you're not thinking about the subject or the model that I've placed in front of the camera but it can become more about you and make you start to question tensions and paradoxes in your own life, I hope. My gladish. I think there's a lot of reasons that people do art. There's kind of two roads that I go. There's kind of the arts for art's sake type of art that I do, and then there's the art with a purpose. My long-term goal at some point is to go to Africa and work with AIDS orphans and do photography of them and mixed media pieces and come back and do shows and raise awareness. And kind of started thinking through it and thought, I want to try something smaller first and on a smaller scale and see how that goes before I do this huge jump of moving to Africa for a while and working on those things. And so I kind of thought about causes that were important to me and my grandma was a breast cancer survivor. And so I decided to do a show that really honored breast cancer survivors. and. We started planning that show, and then in the midst of that, um, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. It was just really, um, I think, a good process for our entire family of working on this breast cancer show and kind of working through our emotions, and I think it was a therapeutic and bonding experience for all of us. <laughs> Crave your big bright moon.